So, today we are talking about bacterial metabolism. Nom 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 nom. How they eat and get their food and get their energy and everything. Mm. So, bacterial metabolism. What is metabolism? First, it is the sum up of all the chemical processes that occur in the cell. Everything that happens. There are two things, two types that occur. First one, anabolism is the synthesis of complex compounds using and use of energy. Also known as building things and using energy. Again, building things and using energy. Second type, catabolism is the exact opposite. It is breaking things and releasing energy for us to capture. So, again, catabolism is breaking and releasing energy. Anabolism is building and using that energy. You do need to know these two things, okay? Anabolism, building, using energy. Catabolism, breaking and releasing energy. The requirements. Everything living requires two main things. First off, it requires energy. Now these are in the forms of high energy molecules. Now you all know one, that is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. You do need to know the long term for that one. The other two are less known, but are very important. It is going to be NADPH and NADH. Now, these three high energy molecules, when something is broken off, releases energy. So again, something is broken off of these three to release energy. Now, the other requirement that every single living thing must have is carbon, which we can get from breaking down things that we take in or by building them up by bringing in chemicals and building up the carbon. So, again, there's two ways, taking something in and breaking it down to get our carbon or bringing in chemicals and building to make our big carbon molecule. Okay, overview of metabolism, the whole thing. Simple picture. Yes, you must draw it. Remember, we're talking about oval, words, and arrows. And maybe a squiggly line for the flagella. You can draw this. It'll be okay. So, let's first stop off here at the top, where we have our nutrients for biosynthesis. Ooh, bio meaning life, synthesis meaning to create. So, we must be talking about here, building things up with anabolism, to create our macromolecules, which are the molecules of living things, the molecules of life. Everything needs these guys. And we do that by anabolism, remember, by building things and using energy. So, where does that energy from come from? Well, it can come from chemicals or light sources. And it goes, comes in, and it goes through catabolism, which, remember, is breaking down and releasing energy. Now, where does that energy go? It can go to over here for energy for motility, transportation, nutrients, and so on. It can go over here for anabolism, to cre for biosynthesis, to create our macromolecules. And it can also go out as waste products, such as fermentation products, such as acids, alcohols, carbon dioxide, and others, or reduced electron acceptors. So, again, yes, drop. <laughs> the overview. And moving on. Okay, bacterial metabolism. There are two types that we talk about. Well, I just showed four, but two types. We talk about autotrophs, which can make their own food or their own sugars, or heterotrophs, that must eat their sugars or gain their sugars from another living organism. Okay, photosynthetic bacteria. We all know about photosynthesis. Photosynthetic bacteria use light to create sugar. Easy enough. Light to create food. Chemotrophic bacteria use chemicals that they bring in to create their sugars. They don't use the light, but they use chemicals that they bring in or that are in their surroundings. But again, both these two are going to be autotrophs so they can create their own food. Next we have heterotrophs. We are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs in the bacterial world come in two forms. One is a parasite feeding off of living organisms, 
or a saprophyte. A saprophyte takes nutrients from dead organisms. But either way, a heterotroph must eat some other thing to actually gain its food source. So, in this video, we're going to be focusing on our autotrophs today. And then in part two, we'll be talking about the heterotrophs. So, let's move on to photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So, I'm going to start by talking about plants, because we all know about plants. You've all taken biology. You have. I know you have. So, in plants, we have a light reaction, which we use the light, and we have a dark fixation, which is when it happens in dark. So, light reaction um, is when photolysis of H2O produce ATP and NADH. Now, what does that mean? Photolysis. Light and lysis means to cut. So, the light comes in and oxygen is cut. When oxygen is cut, it gives off an electron. And that electron is excited from the photon or the light. And that electron gets really excited and starts moving around and it starts jumping from molecule to molecule. called the electron transport chain. And due to this, Hydrogens are going to be pumped out of the cell. Now, what that means is that I have a whole bunch of hydrogen outside the cell that can then come back in and actually form ATP, or NADH. Okay, now we talk about the dark fixation, which is when we use the production of that ATP and NADH from that light reaction to fix carbon, to make it Oh, in a way that we can use it. So, we all know the photosynthesis reaction. Take carbon dioxide, we add water, we get this nice molecule, which is glucose, C6H12O6, and then we get oxygen as our leftover. So, again, this is talking about higher plants. So let's look what, what happens in the actual bacteria. Oh, sorry, just kidding. There are two types um, that we actually go through. We can go through the cyclic phosphorylation, which is meaning adding a phosphate to the ATP. So, again, light comes in. We've got our chlorophore. Our electron is excited. It goes to the electron transport chain. The energy that is created can create our ATP. And then an electron carrier will take it back to the chlorophyll. Now this is the cyclic because it's in a circle. It goes around and around, where we go, where we stop, nobody knows because it keeps going around. Cyclic form. Now guys, this one's going to be very important. I will come back to this slide in just a few minutes to talk about photosynthesis in a bacteria. Now, this is the non-cyclic form. So again, light comes in, H2O is split and the electrons are excited. It again goes through the electron transport chain. Some energy is given off to create ATP, but then our electron is added and brings over one of these hydrogens and creates NADPH. So it's not cyclic. The electron is not given back to the chlorophyll. And so we have to have our donor. And in this case, our donor is going to be water. It's going to break and then give us hydrogens to use and electrons to use. So, again, difference is in the non-cyclic, we have a donor, an electron donor. And in the cycle, the electron carrier becomes our donor, and it keeps going around in a circle. Okay, differences in bacterial photosynthesis. Only one photosystem. Um, to do photolysis of H2O. H2O is not the source of the electron donor. Oxygen is never formed as a byproduct. Bacterial chlorophyll observes longer wavelengths than the normal plant chlorophyll. What that means is that it can absorb more wavelengths on the reddish color, because red is a longer wavelength than the other colors. And similar, so it does have a similar carbon fixation. 
and it only has the cyclic form of photophosphorylation. Remember, photophosphorylation is a big word, but it's simple. It's using light, where's my mouse? There we go. Using light to add a phosphate to something. In this case, it's going to be adding it to ATP. Okay, so anoxygenic photosynthesis. What the heck does that mean? Okay, we can break down the word. We got this. So, an means not or without. Oxygen, and she's going to talk about oxygen. Photosynthesis. So this is what happens when there's no oxygen or the bacteria cannot actually use oxygen. So, yes, it is a cyclic form. It is a cycle that goes on. The light comes in, the electron gets excited, and picks up a quinone. A quinone, um, which is in a quinone pool, and it excites the quinone. So it gets really excited. The quinone goes through the pool, picks up two H2s, and carries it, and then transfers its energy. Oops, where's my mouse? There we go. Transfers its energy to BC1. When it transfers its energy to BC1, the H2s, the hydrogens, are pumped outside. The BC1 then gives the rest of the electron back to an iron sulfur um, compound. The iron sulfur gives it to chromium 2. Chromium 2 then comes over here and gives it back to the reaction center for the chlorophyll. Now guys, again, this is a cyclic version. Reaction center, the light from the reaction center, wait right now, there we go. Light from the reaction center excites the electron, grabs the quinine, quinine grabs two hydrogen, quinine releases the two hydrogen to outside, giving the electron to the BC1, giving it to the sulfur or the iron sulfur compound. Then to chromium 2, chromium 2 gives it back. The cycle it happens over and over again. But why and what is the purpose? Aha! Here it is at the bottom. The purpose of this is to add more hydrogen ions to the outside so that they can come back in the ATPase and create ATP. So we are pumping out hydrogens, more and more and more hydrogens, more hydrogens, more hydrogens, so that three hydrogens can come back in and give us, and turn this turnstile that is in the ATPA to give us the energy to take ADP and add a phosphate to create ATP.